Okay, I'm getting ready for my date, and uh, I thought I'd bring my products in here and use them while I'm talking to you. I have nervous energy, but in a good way, because concurrently to getting ready for my first, well, actually, this is my second date <clears throat> with my new favorite boomer. Is it my second date? Is it my second date or third date? Oh, my God. It feels like a third date, but I think it's the second date. That's right. We went to this place called Wilco and uh, we had cocktails. And then I drove him home because he walked there because he lives downtown area. And then we been in communication with each other. Oh my God. Oh my God, why does it feel like it's the third date? Three's the charm. I don't know. So I'm getting ready and talking to y'all because some of you have found my channel because of narcissistic abuse. And I am the survivor of a narcissistic like, abusive, pathologically narcissistic abusive mother who ruled the family home, who determined the fates of her children. And as adults, I'm the youngest at 60, at 60, just getting your shot together. I didn't die or kill myself. It's a miracle. <clears throat> it's been said, earth is a fast track for ascending masters. I consider myself a master. I got my doctorate, you know, proverbial. Or, you know, not your real one, but your real one. In other words, narcissistic abuse partners one after the other after the other because I modeled, they modeled the behavior of my mother, how I was treated, discarded, disrespected, dismissed, all the disses. <laughs> you disassociate and you get stuck in this trauma bond of always trying to please, always trying to please. Because when they finally show some love to you, when they finally dole out some scrap, some little morsel, some tidbit, some crumb of love, you eat it up because you're starving. You're love starved, which makes you vulnerable to the narcissistic male as a female. I'm not gonna show you what I'm putting in because I'm not promoting product, but essentially I'm putting in serums. These are all serums that do magic to the skin and uh, there is a trick to lighting, I, and I have very harsh lighting, but people use filters. I'm filter free, I'm unedited. You're gonna see the full age of me, and I love the full age of me. I love being an elder female. Speaking of which, Priscilla Presley looked younger than her daughter, Lisa Marie. And Lisa Marie <coughs> died recently but it looks like she went in peace right after the Golden Globes. Um, speculation is that she, but I don't know. I mean, that, but that's what happened to my mother. Okay, so you guys are gonna go on my journey with me. When I go to Arizona, I am going to have to turn this into a comedy uh, because already, all right, we have a group text with the family. Uh, my sister Jan and her daughter Catherine left the group text after I called them out on swooping in and taking advantage of my mother's condition and taking her car uh, while she was under the um, effects of drugs, when she was like, take what you want. And then of course she comes to and plus she had dementia. So now she's all pissed off her car is missing. <laughs> they drove off, they put loot in that car, take what you want. And now they can't find shit because my sister the dumb bitch threw everything out in the bathroom thinking that she was cleaning out that mom is going to go to hospice all right now i'm the youngest okay i'm also the one that sees patterns i see <laughs> i i know what shit's gonna happen before it happens in this family it's maddening <laughs> i'm having a beer i've got the pre-jitters i'm having a beer not jitter, jitters about the date, but jitters about going to Arizona. That's all I can think about. And I know I have to be Zen. Um, 
and mindful and be in the moment. But the group thread, I had the opportunity to express myself and be like, I don't want to be alone with that woman unless I can lock the door. Or when I was in high school, she came running into the bedroom, tore me off of my bed and yelled at me. She dragged me and my body off of my bed. I'm clinging to my mattress. Why? Because she was upset that I almost worried her to death because I got into a car accident and she was worried about me. So she herself was gonna kill me the next morning. <laughs> Thanks, mom. So my daughter Erica is like, just bring earbuds, bring earbuds, mom. Listen to earbuds. All right, I am gonna bring so many pairs. <laughs> they're, they're gonna be everywhere. I'm gonna have earbuds everywhere. Earbuds, earbuds, ear. I am gonna be having this everywhere in my phone. I will be listening to music or something. Maybe a positive messaging tape on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, I can focus on my breathing and let go <laughs> of, the, of the drama. <laughs> Y'all, I'm going back into the dragon's lair that I escaped from barely with my sanity. <sighs> I didn't realize that she was the source of my entire life's ails until August of 2022. I couldn't understand why I kept going from narc male to narc male to narc male. Why was I marrying these men who treated me like shot? Why was I hanging out? Why was I marrying these men who took advantage of me? Who manipulated me? Who read my diaries and then used the information in there to mind fuck me? Oh, childhood all over again. <sighs> So, what's this got to do with Lisa Marie Presley and her mother? Nothing and everything. Everybody deals with stress differently. And also, some of us are ready to go. And I honestly thought that I was going to be dead by now. I really did. And now I, I get to assess my life and go, what do I really want? Do I want to be in a successful relationship because it's proven the worst choice I could possibly make. I've done two marriages and a third really bad experience, which left me financially in not dire straits. I'm not in any debt, but he, he milked me. He took my, he took, he took my extra, extra for himself. I gave it willingly because I was fucking stupid. That's what happens when your instinct injured and you're a child of narcissistic abuse. You don't have healthy boundaries. And a narcissist recognizes that and will take advantage of you any way they can. Physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and financially, especially. <laughs> but here we are on Earth, and this is a... Uh, fast track for masters and the earth loves us and wants us to know it okay so we are spiritual beings above all else we are here for our life lessons we are to learn them Lisa Marie Presley learned hers lost weight looked great at the globes and is now passed on <laughs> Here's to her, and may her father and her son meet her on the other side and guide her away from the life, life review unless they want to come back onto the planet again. All right, here's the deal. I didn't know Lisa Marie personally, but somebody in my field of aesthetics worked on her while they were in Hawaii working in a high-end spa, and that very privileged, financially well-off individual popped up out of her facial and demanded a cappuccino. In the middle of a facial. Now that's somebody who can afford a facial every day. Now, most women 
in a regular financial bracket can afford one facial a month. And believe me, because that's what I do, I'm an esthetician, they will spend that entire hour totally enjoying that experience. They are not gonna pop up and request anything. In fact, they ask to stay longer. Can I add on more time? Can I get more massage? So, because I didn't know her, but my, my trainer for the company that I work with, I'm partnered with, <clears throat> since she had worked on her, she's like, she's just a spoiled rich bitch. She's not mean or anything, but she has got so much money that she will pop up out of a facial. A beautiful, wonderful facial to demand a cappuccino. Oh, I want a cappuccino. <clears throat> so, I'm not one of those people that are like, oh, she's so grounded, she's so earthy. No, she's so effing wealthy that she pops up out of a facial for a cappuccino. May she rest in peace. <laughs> if you get your life review though, you're gonna come back rich because you know what? Having money in this planet is really fun. It also can fuck you up, but it's, if you're on this planet and this is the playground for the wealthy, the other alternative is to be in a primitive tribe that doesn't yeah, get messed with by the outside world. That would be a, a choice. Uh, somewhere in the Amazon <clears throat> where women get to be women and men get to be men and we, we get to do tribal things and women have periods and get to go meditate in little teepees, <laughs> lounge in trees, and wear their women in little hammocks on their body, and grow things in the garden, and have their men go out and hunt while they gather. <laughs> Not a bad life. Okay, but here I am on planet Earth in a Western culture, and I've had people, wee, 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 and from the ghetto, you've got white privilege. Heck, yeah, I've got white privilege. I'm white, and I'm privileged to be white. It's fun. But being white, privileged, and rich is even better. <laughs> Unless you've got way too much drugs, way too much money, and way too many drugs going on. What seems to be the problem of these wealthy people? Like, they've got drug pushers galore all around them because... They're vulnerable. But anyway, I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to be going into the dragon's lair. I'm going to be going into um, my parents' home. The last visit in August was not so pleasant. Um, I have to learn how to not speak. I have to use all the tactics I use in that last narcissist from hell relationship. It lasted 10 years over a span of 11. Um, I was with a Peruvian guy off at, uh, when I was off from the on again, off again, on again, off again, on again, off again, on again, off again relationship with the ex narc in Virginia, who I used to say was my favorite mistake. And now I say he's my biggest mistake because he cost me the most. Well, the second one cost me a whole lot. Well, the first one did too. Let's just say that, that if um, heaven is what they say it is, they meaning um, fortune, they say St. Germain on Crow 777 Radio, Crow with two R's, 777 Radio. Fortune St. Germain is my teacher. He doesn't know me. I don't know him personally, but he's my teacher. And he teaches spiritual alchemy. I'll be teaching that alongside my sexual stuff, okay? But he says, quote unquote, the only thing you take to heaven is what you've given away on earth. And I have given away so much, so much, so much. That I'm not going to want to leave heaven. <laughs> if I get to have what I've given away, oh my God. I'm going to have like the best time there. <laughs> I've given away love. I've given away wealth. I've given away wealth. I've given away wealth. I've given away love. Ah, I am going to be so wealthy with love. 
But you know, this is what I, I want to be in a, in a place where I get to be in nature. I, I envision a castle um, that's always warm and the floors are heated and then there's fire and light from unseen sources that are golden and there are crystals everywhere of different sizes. And then there are pools outside that have varying degrees of temperatures and minerality so that you can actually like go from a hot plunge to a cold one if you wish. And then you can descend down when you go to the edge of this beautiful cliff area. There's a long uh, descent and grassy knolls along the way where it's sort of like um, plateau uh, farming that's on the southern side where they have all these gardens along the face like all, where you can plant all your herbs, uh, salt loving ones because of the brine that's gonna be in the ocean uh, breeze coming off. And then below the ocean is rolling upon the shore and this beautiful white sands. And then the water comes into a waterfall. I see the whole thing, waterfall on the bottom. Yeah, I know what I'm gonna create. <laughs> I'm here on this planet now dealing with shit and uh, I I had my little tissy fit online with uh, the group text and my daughter was like uh, you're looking off off the edges I go it's okay I need to vocalize my off the edge I'm off the edge because I'm vocalizing how I am afraid I am not going to be able to do it I had to leave the house before but that's again that's when I answered questions I'm gonna act like the help I don't know what I'm going to do, but that, that woman will argue over everything because she's a narcissist and she requires confrontation to feel alive. So I'm going to have to fawn on her to keep her from creating confrontation, which is energy depleting. God help me. What do I do? And Corky's like, I don't mind if you smother her with a pillow. <laughs> oh, Corky, don't laugh over stuff like that. Don't joke even. She was joking, okay? She wasn't serious. And I'm like, Cork, man, all I'm looking for is to make sure our parents pass on to the other side with the least amount of trauma to all of us. But, you know, in, in my case, to myself, you know, The latest ex that didn't make it past um, one sexual encounter because he was so bad in bed. And he insisted on condoms, even though I hadn't had sex for a year and a quarter. And he claimed and I've had sex for a year, but he said he only have condom sex and I don't do condoms. And why would you use condoms if you're, if you're committed to somebody? So I learned, I learned a couple of things. Number one, I have lust. Okay, so I got punished. Uh, a Christian would be like, oh, well, you're 60 and he's like 40 something. So uh, weren't you kind of lustful for going? No, I wasn't. Yes, I was. No, I wasn't. Yes, I was. No, I wasn't. Yes, I was. Of course. It's a, it's a combination. I had feelings. I had real feelings for this person. But I no longer trust my feelings. I'm able to love. I'm really good at loving. I'm a professional lover. But no, I don't do sex for money. I do, I do sex for love. And he wanted me to subject myself to torture. So yes, I had to do coitus interruptus with this fucking rubber. And I, I was like, dude, I can't. And I want to say this. He's like, well, can you hold me? I'm like, okay. So he wanted to jerk off and I'm going, okay, I'm going to hold you while you're jerking off into a rubber. And I'm thinking, okay, but he held me back and my neck was like, uh, uh. and so I'm like, okay, let me turn this into a yogic exercise. That's the only way I can do it. So I inhaled and opened my heart and just protected myself and kept my head back because he was holding me so tight that I had to keep my head back. 
because it's like he was embarrassed by his own need to climax. And he didn't do anything like, oh, he didn't do anything like that. He was like the Peruvian guy with a little tiny dicky, smaller than my thumb. The guy that I saw in between the times I was on again, off again, on again, off again, on again, off again with the ex-narc in Virginia. <laughs> the Peruvian American whose wife wouldn't have sex with him and he couldn't figure out why. I could tell you why. It's because once he climaxed, sex was over. And our last night together, I was going to make love to him and, and teach him. I was going to be like, dude, let me do the ride the tan pony because yeah peruvians are tan everywhere i prefer white guys i'm not gonna go anymore to these little tiny peruvian guys no not even this big guys not even this big it's pathetic you have to be a little tiny 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 woman yes we're gonna talk about veg sizes i'm the middle i'm the middle size but there's something called kegels girls and you do that at stop lights you do your kegels. You keep strong. You squeeze those muscles. And also, I don't care what Owen Benjamin, the comedian, says. You have to have regular masturbation when you're single and over 50. Because if you don't use it, you will lose it. Yes. If you held it off and didn't utilize it at least once a week, have your sex day. Just like you have your facial day, have your self plush lo and, and, and loving day, which we're going to talk about. It's in, the, it's in the books. I am going to talk about the art of sexual ecstasy. We are. We're going to talk about this stuff. It's very important. Self-pleasuring is extremely important. Some call it masturbation, which is fucking stupid because it's not masturbation. When it's done to awaken the kundalini and the sexual energy within you. And you have to learn how to open what's called the inner flute with the PC pump, sexual breathing, pelvic rocking. And then you do it with your partner eventually. And you build up intimacy. Okay? Get the book. Get started. We're going to have discussions about it. This is the book. This is the... I. Uh, Where's the ISBN? Yeah, you'll, you'll figure it out. This person. Yeah, I'm sure you're intelligent enough to go on Amazon.com. So I'm going to be going on my date, and I didn't want to talk to him about my family the entire time, but we did text back and forth so that I could let him know that, yes, I'm gearing up, and I'm feeling a little bit of stress already, and I want to process the cortisol dumping I'm experiencing so that I recognize that I must learn how to get my game face on so I'm not triggered because this is, again, Earth is a uh, classroom for the ascending master. I'm ascending. The material world is a trap, even though it is really nice to have money here on the planet. So much fun. It is. It's so much fun to have money. Um, I've been able to experience it and I've had a lot of good times, but I got to tell you the best things in life are free. The energy from the earth, the sunshine, the look of stars at night, the breeze on your skin, the experience of a waterfall, hiking to a beautiful waterfall. Yeah, mountains. So I'm going to keep this under 25 minutes because YouTube has been very slow and I only have like a certain amount of G's on my plan. And so my uploads are slow, slow. <laughs> They're so slow. It's pathetic. Um, all right. Going on the date. He's going to talk to me about mindfulness exercises because he knows about the stress cortisol thing. And I will report back later.